Who Sorry? attended the Gary Keller piece yesterday on Bowl? I heard part of it, but I was uh, I was taking a um, I did a, a uh, ethics class at the same time, so I missed. A little. <laughs> oh wow! I was there. Okay. I picked up when they went right at the end of Gary, and they went into Bold um, gotcha. after that. Yeah. How are you doing? Good? I used to go uh, online. Exactly. I'm sorry. Say it again. Randy, you were saying something. Oh, I said, I, I assume it's online, I, that they recorded it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Um, between between Gary Keller and today, the Pivot Shift group at 8 o'clock in the morning, I want to say it was probably one of the better sessions um, that I've attended. And I, I pulled a lot of nuggets from that that I thought were really powerful. So, um, yeah, oh, between those two, I thought it was uh, a lot of good learning this week. What was your biggest, or what were your awesome nuggets that you took out of Gary's piece? I said I, I missed I missed a good portion of it because I was on that ethic. I was trying to get my credit to get my uh, my ethics done. It was yesterday, so it was eleven thirty to one uh, to I guess it was what was it? It was one thirty to two thirty. So I missed his half. Well, when you I definitely on, have to go watch it. I, I thought, yeah, that's what I was saying. yeah, I thought what he said about um, people making care calls and the fact that, you know, we, we should have been doing those all alone. And so people are like kind of getting into this mindset of I need to make my care calls and touch my database. And they're all jumping to do that now. It's something that's part of our business. We have to farm and we have to hunt. So farming our database is a big part of our job. And then hunting and finding like expires and fizzables is another part. And he just made it sound so matter of fact, like that's our job. That's what we should be doing from day one. And the mm -hmm. fact that it takes, you know, this, this COVID quarantine to get people into doing the activities they should have been doing uh, was a bit of an eye opener. I love that he shared that. I, I kind of go back to the first class and I keep saying it to myself. I'm trying to live it. It's, it's tough. I'm trying to get into it. It's about the schedule. Um, yeah. it's, it's not real estate. It's the schedule. So I'm trying a little better to try and schedule like, you know, doing things, you know, you have to, yeah. if you don't schedule it, it doesn't exist is basically what they all were saying. So if you yeah, want to make it care calls, you want to make the prospect, it's not on your schedule, you're not doing it. And you can't do anything else that's not on your schedule, which is kind of hard, like things come up and then distract you from what you're supposed to be doing, so. I thought that was very good. I love that Can I share something with you? Can I? I love that you said that too. And, and hopefully you guys can hear him. It's telling me my internet connection's a little unstable. Randy, can I share something with you? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go okay, ahead. so Randy, here's what I want to share with you. <laughs> yes, I, I love what you, you just right said. I love what you just said. I wonder if you were aware of how many times you said try. I heard try about seven times in, in that two minutes that you were just talking. And so one thing that I learned in bold and one thing I teach in my push program is that we don't say try, we say intend. And so I would encourage you if I could coach you on that to start saying my intention is to follow my schedule, intend. And when you say intend, uh, there's more commitment behind it than saying try. Because you're absolutely right. It is about following a schedule. If you look at my calendar, this time block, all the activities from waking up and getting doing my Peloton workout all the way through to walking my dog to everything I have to do on my day is in my schedule. And the, how do I say this? What really helped me was understanding that I'm a professional. And just like I can't call my lawyer or my attorney or call my doctor or my dentist and say, hey, I'm free at two. Can I come in? They're going to tell me no. They're going to say, I have a schedule. You can't come in at two, but I have four o'clock available. It's the same way you have to treat your business, Randy, because you are a professional as well. And if you have activities, time block, and things come up, you have the power to say, I actually have a meeting during that time, but I'm free during this time. And you have to give yourself permission to mm -hmm. follow that schedule because you teach people how to treat you. And if you stop doing what you're supposed to be doing to go do all the distractions that come up, that's real estate. You're not going to make money if you're not focused on the right activities. Does that make sense? Right. 
No, absolutely. I mean, I, that's what I've been getting. You know, a lot of the bold is, you know, uh, a lot of words around main functions. So, uh, you know, for me, I'm deriving that, you know, it's, it's, it's routine. It's routine. It's getting into yeah. a routine and sticking with it and, and intending to, yes. to, to stick to the schedule. Intending. So, I love uh, it. You already switched that up. Awesome. Yes. Intending <laughs> to switch, uh, stick to the schedule. That's awesome. What's your yeah. schedule look like right now? Um, today, I'll, I took my walk early, so that was done because I needed I need my mind, and then I was going to do some uh, prospecting up until about two thirty, and at three, I have uh, I'm I'm actually meeting socially distant uh, a former client of mine um who's referred me a few things so i'm meeting with her and then i'm trying to um somebody and if somebody who's unhappy with their agent reached out to me so i'm supposed to talk to them um which is you know always tricky okay. so um you know so that's supposed to happen at around five so that's my schedule i'm supposed to be making a lot of calls today okay. and somewhere I have well, to fit you know, in. I was looking at my, I was looking uh, at my walk right now. You know, uh, I know you did your walk that. today and it's 11 o'clock. Mm. I don't know if our connection's good because I feel like I'm talking, you're talking. I'm not sure how well my connection is. Um, well, I, I was, what did you do I between was your out, walk I was and out this morning today? at eight, so. <laughs> no, my walk was at eight. Good. So, so it, was it was done by 9.30. <laughs> okay. So no, That's I've been actually so working with Elise on 11. my neighborhood. Yeah. No, no, okay. no, no. 8.30 okay. to 9, 8, 8, 8 o'clock to 9.30. And I walk with someone who is okay. a good resource, got me my last listing, and we walk five miles. So that's what we do in the morning. So, and then I was on actually texting with Elise before you because I'm having some neighborhood issues. Uh, I'm doing neighborhoods on, she has me doing neighborhoods. And we uh, actually did a, okay. an email and it didn't work. <laughs> so I'm figuring, so that's what I've been doing between 9.30 and 11, <laughs> trying to fix that, so. Hey, Michelle, thanks for joining. Admin. Okay, so, so Randy, um, when, when you said that you're embracing scheduling and knowing that you need to follow a routine, uh -huh. um, and Michelle, she joined the call now, Michelle will tell you that our mornings are for generating business and our afternoons are dealing with business. And so I would encourage you, you know, if you're really talking about that schedule to make sure that things like meeting with the least about your neighborhoods, schedule that stuff in the afternoon and protect your morning so that you, you stay focused on making your, your calls and bleed Jenny. Flip it around is what you're saying. Yeah, that's your if that's the schedule that you want to follow to be successful, making sure the morning times are spent booking new business, new opportunities. Um, and once that's done, you can talk to Elise all day. Um, mm -hmm. you, you definitely want to make sure that stuff is done early in the morning. Okay, I'll flip it. It's not a big so deal. Just follow the work on your business in the morning and in your business in the afternoon. That's right. So so any like social media stuff, any command stuff, learning in the afternoon. Amen. Amen. Michelle, how are you? How's things going with uh, the bold pivot and your activities? Um, they're going. It's going. Yesterday was um, probably one of the most valuable classes ever. <laughs> I felt like everyone was speaking directly to me. <laughs> um, and the, the, chi the change in mindset, I think, is going to be a big um, it's going to be a big change for me because, because I fear picking up the phone. I don't like making those calls, but if you look at it a different way, it makes sense. So, yeah. So, yeah. And what was it? What was the big way for you that you were looking at it that makes it uh, change your mindset up? That you're helping people. And when Gary said, it's fun to help people. I was like, it is fun to help people. I mean, that's why I, I volunteer in my town and that's why I, you know, do all these other activities um because i like to help people and it really clicked yesterday <laughs> so it did click when he said that and then this morning on the pivot call when they said stop saying that i'm practicing scripts it's it's dialogue like when they said dialogue instead of scripts i'm like man just changing those two words out makes it feel different it feels like 
Like, hey, I'm in conversation with you. It's it's a dialogue that we're having versus I need to know my scripts and I need to be a script master, right? Yes. Script always, That's awesome. always yeah. felt such pressure with the word script. Like, I don't know my script, but it's a dialogue. You're having a conversation with the other person. So yeah, that was that was a light bulb that went on yesterday for sure. So Yeah, same for me. I so agree with you on that. Hey, Yara, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Awesome. We we're just kind of talking about this week, uh, Bo Pivot, how things are going, if you're making your care calls and you know what what takeaways you've had from this week. Yeah, this week like this week and uh, was like very good both uh, session and the last one too. So, yeah, I'm, I was doing my care calls but like I'm slow for the last two days. I'm okay. a little bit down. Gotcha. Gotcha. And and what what's causing you to be down on the care calls? I don't know, like maybe because like I I don't get that much like leads or con contacts out of that. Gotcha. And, and yet, is is it that you really need a lot, or do you just need that one person that really needs your help? Yeah, it's one person, but like I can't reach that per that person. <laughs> well, you, you definitely can't meet reach them if you slow down on your calls. That's for sure. I I um I want to share a story. I was talking to Patty Gurney, and she was on the call this morning, and her and I we role play as part of you know, bold pivot. And she was telling me that yesterday she was doing her care calls and she called H. She had tons of H's and she ended up calling someone that she hadn't talked to in three years. And they were like, wow, it's so funny that you're calling me. I'm actually thinking about moving back to Ramsey and you couldn't have known that, but you happened to call me. And so now she has this opportunity to help someone actually buy a house in Ramsey just because she made that call. And so the thing that you have to keep in mind is during the shift, we have to work harder to find people who are motivated and need our help right now. And so in the past, when you could have made 20 calls and found someone, you have to make 40, 60, 80 calls now to really find the people that are motivated and need our help right now. If you take your foot off the gas, other agents are going to get to them first and you're going to miss out on that opportunity. So I just want to encourage you even though you're not getting the results right now, by you making the calls and planting the seeds and having those conversations, you'll find people who need your help now and later, and you'll keep your pipeline full. So you, you can't take your foot off the gas, Yara. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, I'm just like was slow like the last two days. I'm trying. I did like five calls today. That's it. So I think I think Randy wanted to tell you a lesson about the word trying. Randy, can you share something with Yara about the word trying? <laughs> I'm a quick study. I wrote it down. Um, it's not your trying, it's your intent. And that yes. will solidify it in your mind. Yes, yes. Um, Yara, not to put you on the spot, do you mind sharing what your affirmation is around, around bold pivot? Uh, yes. What was that? Uh, I forget what, which one. I, I was circling it. I forget which one. <laughs> okay. I remember that's, the that's last fair. one. The success is not, I, like, it's easy, but not, uh, no, it's simple, but not easy. Okay. So not to harp on Patty. However, I have to share something else with you. We came up with her affirmation. Do you know what her affirmation is? Have you heard her say it? No. It's, and I'm paraphrasing. I might be off a little bit. It was... I'm a listing magnet and listings come to me easily. And today we added to it and said, my sellers are coachable and they listen to me on where the property should be priced. That's her wow, I like that one. That's yeah. a good one. <laughs> Your, yeah. Yours was crazy though, Yara. She's been saying that every day. If you ask her her affirmation, she knows it like, boom, here it is. And so the fact that you didn't know yours, I want to encourage you to say yours more because they're powerful. Yeah. And you need to speak what you want to get out of the bold program. So for Patty, she's like, listings come to me easily. In the past two weeks, three listing opportunities came to her. Not her calling, mm -hmm. but people calling her. And so it's important, your mindset and how you speak, you know, the activities that you're doing, the affirmations that you're saying is so important. And I would choose, I would encourage you to choose an affirmation that says something about what you're looking to get out of this business. Mm -hmm. So 
I, I'd love to follow up with you and find out what, what affirmation you choose to say, even after both pivots over okay. mine was I'm a listing machine. I have to set more appointments because when people sit down with me, they want to work with me. That was my affirmation because I knew on the phone, if I could book an appointment, once I sat with them, if they had motivation, I could get the listing. And that's what I would say. People, when I sit down with people, they list with me. Okay. So can I give you that homework to, to come up with a solid affirmation and, and, and maybe report back yeah. to me? Will yeah. you be on the call tonight at five? Like, yeah, I, I'll, yes, I'll be. Cool. I it love to hear it at five. Like, okay. Have creative it. Visualization. Say again? It sounds like creative visualization. Am I, Absolutely. Old, am I, am I dating myself? <laughs> no, you're not. Okay, I've been running my yeah. mouth too much. Let me be quiet. Rasham. <laughs> I think you, you're saying everything right. I'm learning from you, David. I sometimes say I try, I try, I'm trying, even with my agent, and uh, I have to stop saying that. Yeah. But it was great that you picked up on Randy, and then I just heard Yara say that, and I'm like, can't say try. <laughs> That's it. You know what's yeah, funny? True. Just taking it off of real estate, if you guys follow me, you know I'm, I'm into photography and I, I would go out every Monday looking for eagles and I would always post, hey, I'm gonna go out and try to find some eagles today and see what I can find. And this I Monday- I one if you want. I know well, let me one. tell you, this morning, well, Monday morning, I woke up and I said, I'm gonna find me some eagles today. So I bought these big old rubber boots that are waterproof. I put those on, I walked across the creek, I climbed up this muddy mountain. I mean, I was a sweaty mess, but I found two eagles on Monday because I was intended, intending to find eagles. I mean, I, I broke into a park that was closed due to COVID and I <laughs> broke in and hopped the fence and did all this crazy stuff, but I, I found the freaking eagles because that was my intention. I wasn't trying. I was gonna find some eagles that day. Even if I had to go break into a zoo and take a picture of an eagle, I was getting the eagle picture on Monday. So. Our intentions, what we speak is so powerful. It's funny, there, there's an eagle in the Wycliffe Lake Reservoir. I know, it's just, it's all <laughs> fenced off and it's so hard to get to. If it's not right by the fence, you can't get it. And I, that's well, what I don't I, like. I see him flying up <laughs> there's certain places where if you look up, you'll see yeah, him soar. I've, I've yeah. been there looking for him, trust me, I know, <laughs> I know. Hey, Megan, thank you for joining. Hi, sorry I'm late. I, I was just at an appointment, but thank you for having me. Oh, well, happy to have you. Um, how's Bo Pivot going this week? Any any breakthroughs? How are things going with your calls? Um, very good. So far, so good. Um, definitely making more calls than I would have anticipated, and, and they're going well. Well, and that's the whole goal of it, right? To do more and more each day and get better and better as you go through the program. Um, exactly. The calls that you're making, are you getting any opportunities from those calls? I am. I've had a, um, a couple people say, um, I've had a couple people with, with younger children and they do want me to come in once things lift a little bit more. Um, but a couple people who are thinking of listing soon. That's, that's amazing. Great. That's great. So you're finding some leads for now and later. That's awesome. Right. And then I was also able to um, set up more Zoom calls with buyers through this. I've touched base with um, buyers also, and we've had a conversation, but then they want to, you know, get both husband and wife on the call. So we've set up Zoom calls for later this week. Well, I'm very happy to hear that things are, are going well for you. Uh, What's your follow-up system with the people who told you, you know, come in after, you know, quarantine's been lifted? How are you following up with those people? I marked them in my calendar. I mean, I, I touch base with them day, uh, weekly on through different avenues, um, but I marked in my calendar to call them again in two weeks. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, now, are they, are they telling you to call in two weeks or is that what you put in your calendar? No, I just put it in my calendar. And if it's, okay. you know, if we're in the situation where we're still not really leaving the house, then I'll just make it another care call. And um, I feel like with when people have young children, it's easy enough to make a care call. And 
say, how's it going? And you know, mm-hmm. how you doing with the homeschooling and all that. So I have an okay. easier time with that. That's awesome, Megan. And um, not to put you on the spot, but I was curious to know if you'd be willing to share what your bold affirmation is. <laughs> I don't know if I, I have to think about that one. Okay. Think about it, <laughs> okay. I, I would love for you to think about it and, and come up with okay. a, a strong affirmation that um, speaks into your business and what you want your business to look like moving forward. That, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear it when you come up with it. Okay. Cool. Cool. So what can we discuss? I have eight minutes left. I have a call at 1130, so I have to jump off at 1129. So what's what's happening around bold, your activities that we can talk about that would bring you value? Sorry, I'm, uh, it's, it's for everyone, right? <laughs> or, or we, it, it, it just okay. jump in there, jump in there. Okay. I actually have something. Um, so yesterday, um, one of the coaches uh, mentioned that you know you have to have a script of the moment. So, um, in your opinion, David, what would uh, a script of the moment be for, say, an expired? So, when you say script of the moment, you mean dealing with because of the quarantine, right? And yeah. not and, you know not being and being sensitive to the fact that it is a quarantine and and you don't so, want to be too pushy and yeah. Yeah, and so here's the whole thing. I love, I think I shared this with you before, Michelle, and, and excuse me if I butcher the quote, um, but it's, I'm not here to force you into making a bad decision. I'm just here to give you enough information to make a great decision. And so whether that's selling your house now or actually waiting, I just want you to make the best decision for you. And so what I'd love to do is find out a little bit more about your motivation for selling the home and, and talk with you a little bit more about your plans moving forward. I, I really believe that an expired is an expired. A FISBO is a FISBO. And if someone has to sell, it doesn't matter if there's you know, a quarantine going on, they have to sell their home. And so what they shared on the, on the mindset call this morning that I thought was powerful was ask and listen your way into their heart and mind. And so we just need to ask a lot of questions behind their motivation, because if the quarantine's an issue and they're not going to sell their house or let people into their home right now, It's more of a condition. That's something you can't overcome. However, those people who have to sell right now, they're looking for a way to get that done effectively. And we have a way. We have a plan. We have a way that we can do things virtually. And so we need to spend a little bit more time just talking to them about what they're trying to accomplish or what they intend to accomplish, I should say. And then based on that, we can say, listen, I'd like to talk with you. I'm not here to force you into making a bad decision. My job is to come from contribution to educate you on making a, the best decision for you and your family. And if that's to sell now, I'm here to help you. If that's to sell a year from now, I'm here to help you. I just want you to have the information. And to me, that's kind of the script for now is just letting them know you're not here to force them into selling their home. It may not be the right decision right now to sell their home. All right. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Okay, thank you. Same thing for a buyer, right? We're not forcing them to buy a house. We're just giving them information. Interest rates are low, right? There's a lot of advantages to buying right now. If they choose not to, that's okay. Let me just give you the information on what's happening and what, you know, so you can decide what's best for you and your family. Right, right. A lot of the buyers that I've talked to are, you know, thinking that they want to wait because prices will go down. And I mean, and I say, I, I can't predict what's to come. I can only tell you what's happening with the market right now. So yeah. you do have to leave it up to them to make a decision. Yeah. Well, what you can talk about though, is what's happening. Like I can't predict the market, but what I can tell you is we've been in quarantine for 75 days. Market's pretty strong. Okay. And so if you are looking to buy a home and the market doesn't go down and actually prices go up and interest rates go up, how are you going to feel about making the decision to wait? And right. you have to find out what their motivation is. See, how, you deal, questions. how would you deal with like sort of the domino uh, sort of one where, you know, you, you, they want to sell. They're not crazy about people in the house, but they also need to buy something. And they wanted to sell first. And there's nothing, you know, in the condo world really to buy now. It's like they know where they want to go. Yeah. And, and nobody is moving right now because everybody's sitting and the inventory is low. So it's like one begets the other, If you know what I mean? Yeah, I I would handle it by telling them why they should actually be working with me because I'm not your typical agent 
I actually prospect every day. So there are tons of listings that are not on the market right now where people want to sell their home. They're just not advertising it. And mm -hmm. so my job is to find those people for you. And if I could find you a place to go and help you get this property sold, would that work for you? Yeah. Yeah. And I then do. I would get to work and start prospecting expires and for sale by owners and right. you know, calling around to find the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Julia, thank you for joining. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. It's good to hear from you again. How are things going with Bo Pivot? Uh, good. I, I think I learned a lot and uh, definitely changes and shifts the perspective. Cool. What, what's the biggest thing you've learned so far that's had an impact on you? I think just having a broader thought and think of it um, as a business, life by design, and just creating that happy, balanced life that we all need. So because if you only focus on work uh, or on clients on getting business and you sort of forget about other aspects of it or you don't keep track of expenses or you just forget your family and your responsibilities so you just don't have time for yourself because you grab every phone call you get yeah i think it's just like overall opened up the, the just that saying okay so you really have to think broadly and just don't focus on on one activity although it's important to focus on one at a time but but keep the big picture in mind no i, I love that you said that and i actually have to hop off this call in like two minutes but i want to tell you something that my coach told me years ago when it comes to you know owning a business, you're right, we are business owners. And so what you have to do is create a schedule around your life first. So I would put all my vacation time, anything that I had going on in my personal life would go on my calendar first. And then I would start adding in work to fill the gaps. And so yes, it's super important that we take out time for ourselves and our family, because if we don't, we, we don't have that balance. And it's very easy to get consumed in real estate However, if you're following a schedule like you should, and the things that are on there for your family and your personal life are in your calendar, and you, you follow that and you respect the time slots, you'll, you'll have success in this business. So, you know, for me, it was dinners with my wife, activities at my girl's school. You know, Mondays are for me to go out and do what I love, which is hiking and taking photography. I had family vacations. I had Keller Williams family reunion, like all the things that were important go on that calendar first and then I would fill in all the activities like lead generating prospecting going on appointments after that so I always made sure you know family came first and you could find a way to build business around that but if you put business first it can consume your time and then you aren't spending the time you should with your family and and yourself like having time for you is important as well yes yes it's important not to become that miserable human being who like okay I need to make money, but I'm so tired of dealing with all these people and their problems and be their shrink. So <laughs> creating a balance is super important. Yeah, creating a balance is important. And then also understanding you choose who you work with. And if you lead generate enough, you, you lead generate so you don't have to tolerate. So if you have clients that are a headache or are being unreasonable, you can fire those people and move on to work with people who are going to be reasonable. So you control this business and I've had to fire clients before and I would do it again because it's not worth putting yourself, your family and your mindset through a bunch of garbage when all you have to do is make some more phone calls and replace that person with another listing. So take, take control of your business is a, a very important lesson I learned early on and you teach people how to treat you. So. I think that was great that you said that in the team leader world, um, we're a little more crude and we use a little rough language. So one of the very successful team leaders one day said to me, you know, you, everybody has to have an FU number. Yep. The day you get that FU number, that's the day you don't need to tolerate. You can just do what you want to do, but till then continue to lead Jen. <laughs> I hear you. I love that <laughs> FU number. <laughs> have an FU number. Put that on your whiteboard. And the day you have it, you don't have to listen to those people. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said in Gary's world, it's not as eloquently as David put it. <laughs> well, you know, 
that I have my days. Typically, that's Wednesday at five o'clock where I might open up my my, my filters a little bit <laughs> during the day. I try to, I try to keep it PG. Um, so, guys, I have to jump off for um, an appointment, and so that's me like following my schedule. I could talk to you guys for another half an hour. Real estate, it's not about selling real estate. It's about following a schedule. And so. Happy Legion, you guys. Yeah, with that being said, happy Legion. And I know David, Thank you. Young, but the one thing I'll say is you are, you just attended Linda McKessick. Let me help you grow your profit share and your passive income streams. I mean, we're the number one office with profit sharing. Why wouldn't you take advantage of it too? So just. Call me if you need me to help you with that also. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Thanks, Rachel. Bye, guys. Thank bye. you. David, bye. Bye, Thank David. Thank you.